We're gonna learn about Bordetella pertussis. The pathogen responsible for whooping cough. This pathogen is most notable for infecting unvaccinated infants and children. These susceptible kids develop at first a week or two of <laughs> cough and stuffy nose, followed by several weeks of severe paroxysmal cough. Now, although this cough is non productive, it's often associated with an inspiratory whoop and post tussive vomiting. But let's talk about this pathogen again, Bordetella pertussis. This chess board over here reminds me of Bordetella, and this pathogen over here, his tusks, remind me of Tussis, Bordetella pertussis. And I begin by noting his shape, that he's a coxobacillus, as Bordetella pertussis is a coxobacillus, and he's red because he stains red in gram staining, due to his thin peptidoglycan wall. And the random oxygen mask is a visual reminder that Bordetella is an obligate aerobe, it's aerobic, it requires oxygen. Now he comes down and smashes the GI blocks over here. The GI on the blocks over here reminds me that the pertussis toxin catalyzes the ADB ribosylation of specific GI protein alpha subunits of the GI family, thus preventing the occurrence of the receptor G protein interaction. This leads to overactivation of adenylate cyclase, and that's why, after the GI blocks got smashed, we saw the unicycle with the lace on top of it for adenylate cyclase start to turn. This, in turn, leads to increased camp production in the host cell, increased secretion of sodium chloride and water, i.e. edema, and this impairs phagocytosis, which allows the bacteria to thrive. Now, in terms of the disease which we described before, which the unvaccinated or unvaccinated child had, there are three stages. And luckily for us, they're right on the wall over here. The catarrhal phase, the paroxysmal phase, and the convalescent phase. And then we saw the mice on the floor over here under the vaccine. We'll talk about the vaccine soon, but these mice, the AZ mice, remind me of azithromyce, azithromycin, as azithromycin and other macrolides can be used to treat Bordetella pertussis infection. But before we get to the vaccine, let's talk about the mother. You see, pertussis is a highly contagious infection, transmitted when a person, for example, coughs, i.e. respiratory droplets. And the truth is, before vaccination, pertussis was predominantly a childhood disease. However, many cases now occur in adolescents or adults whose immunity has waned. And in our scene over here, the mother was all frantic, not because of Bordetella, but because she couldn't find the booster for her child. She was looking for her booster, and she couldn't find it. But luckily for our visual recognition, it was right on the wall over here. This booster over here that the mother couldn't find, that she forgot, reminds us that an adult who forgets to get their booster, their Tdap booster, as they should every 10 years, are susceptible to pertussis infection. So an adult with acute tracheobronchitis who has not had vaccination boosters should be considered for Bordetella pertussis infection. Which brings us to our next point, the vaccine. The DTaP vaccine, which my character over here, I name him Iphis, used to kill Bordetella. Now Tdap is actually vaccine. It doesn't kill the bacteria, it prevents it. And it's recommended that it be delivered in five doses, administered at two months, four months, six months, 16 months, and five years. And then, it's recommended that the Tdap, again not Dtap, but Tdap, be given starting at age 11 or 12 years. And this shot should be repeated every 10 years, for again, as patients who forget to get their boosters are susceptible to pertussis infection. Alright, so in summary, Bordetella pertussis, the pathogen responsible for whooping cough, is a gram-negative coxobacillus which inactivates GI, thereby activating adenylate cyclase, leading to increased intracellular levels of CAMP, thereby inhibiting phagocyte activity and affecting the ciliated epithelial cells. Not only are under-vaccinated children susceptible, but adults as well who do not get their Tdap boosters. And when a patient does get infected, macrolides such as azithromycin can be used to treat the infection. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on Bordetella pertussis. Take care.